Well, hello there, and you join us here today to get into Integrated Fever, because we're going to take a look at all the best watches that you can get that are integrated. If you're looking for a watch, integrated or not, to buy or sell or even trade, check out watchfinder.com. Tom, it seems like from previous discussions, the integrated craze is here to stay. So I think it's good to do our due diligence and help the dear viewer and listener find the right one for them. Um, let's start pre-craze, if you will, pre-integrated, because these watches have existed obviously since the 1970s, but more recently too. And I want to start off with a watch that people might not even be aware of, the IWC Ingenieur, which I'm sure you've heard of, but you probably haven't heard of this one. This is the IWC Ingenieur Mission Earth, and it is a 46 mm rendition of Gerald Genta's Ingenieur SL design. It came out in 2012. It doesn't wear 46 mm, it wears a bit smaller than that. It's obviously very, very closely linked to that Gerald Genta design, and you can pick them up for around four to five thousand pounds. Hold that thought in your mind, Tom, for later on when we discuss more recent iterations of the Ingenieur. But are you familiar with any pre-craze integrated watches? Well, other than the like original 70s designs, but then it wasn't really a craze. That was it was just this is what stuff looks like at the moment. Um, <laughs> but I guess when we're talking about the, the crest of the wave of, uh, yeah, that integrated case shape, I suppose just before I started paying attention, I think the last one was probably the Tudor North flag was, a, was an early attempt at bringing that style back um, with limited success. But that's a really nice watch. I think that's one of Tudor's better watches, a very sleek looking watch. You're absolutely right. And again, because it was not particularly popular at the time, despite having a small cult following, um, being perfectly wearable at 40 millimeters and being the first Tudor with an in-house movement as well, you can pick them up for around three to four thousand pounds, which to me, inclusive of the power reserve on the dial, um, the, the ceramic bezel, everything together there is really spot on for the period, but kind of unheard of. Tom, let's move into the current trend of integrated watches and starting with a bracket uh, of affordable pieces. Um, and I'm going to start with one of the most affordable that you can get in that style. I'm talking about the Timex Q Timex reissue, which was a watch from way back when, and back then was the affordable version of this kind of trend. And you'll see from the watch, the bracelet is folded metal, the crystal is plastic. It is very much a cheap watch, and at £159, it costs very much a cheap price. But that's kind of the charm. You have one of these. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is it is quite charming. I think those are endearing um, characteristics of it. It does, it does sort of carry a 70s vibe with it, but it is a really nice watch. It's nice and compact. It wears really well, and it looks really good as well. So... Um, yeah, that's just a fun one for not much money to, to get yourself some of that good integratedness. You can't spell integrated without great. So there's that. Uh, another really good recent release is one from Citizen, the Ciosa. Integrated, but not specifically 70s. Very sleek, lots of nice tapered edges, very slim bezel. Looks, um, it has a very attractive form factor and with really funky, fresh colors as well. There's no, uh, there's no sort of murky 70s browns or anything, it's very popping. Um, there's even a new, almost looks like a sort of sea bluey green that's very smoky, uh, with a sort of dark vignette on the color of the dial that looks fantastic. This is a really cool watch, it's 40 millimeters, just 299 pounds, 299 pounds as well for an automatic movement pretty much unbeatable. Uh, another unbeatable, affordable, integrated design is of course the Tissot PRX. Everyone's talking about it, people can't get enough of it. Coming in 40 millimeters or 35 millimeters if you're a little slenderer of wrist. Uh, quartz or automatic, 320 pounds for the quartz, 610 pounds for the automatic, which shows the difference in price between the Japanese citizen and the Swiss made Tissot, but nevertheless, it captures the zeitgeist of the 70s integrated watch very, very nicely and has become a bit of a darling child of the budget entry level Swiss integrated sports watch for anyone who's looking to enter that scene. 
yeah, really cool watch. Feels really good. Feels really well made. Um, yeah, more so, more 70s feeling, I think. I equate the 70s look to the the grey cube. And I think the more <laughs> cubes you have on a watch, the more 70s it looks. The PRX has got, uh, you know, the waffle dial. So that's just cubes, wall-to-wall cubes on the dial. Uh, so another bargain integrated watch is a Maurice Lacroix Acon, specifically the hashtag Tide range. It's got all your favorite integrated watch case shape hallmarks. And this one is particularly plasticky. Uh, so the case for these watches is made from ocean bound upcycled plastic, very noble admirable material usage there and it comes in lots of kind of fun plasticky colors my favorite one is the uh basketball association one which looks like uh you something you might get in a happy meal um i think the golden arches on the bracelet there uh give it away <laughs> uh, but for 800 euros what uh, this is no free gift yeah this is that's, that's integrated watch money right there, isn't it? Are we still doing hashtags? Is hashtags still a thing? We sure are, dot com. <laughs> Moving swiftly on from ocean-bound plastic to didn't make it to the ocean steel, this is the Yemma Urban Traveller. Now, this was initially released with a limited edition micro rotor, $2,998 edition, but they have followed up with a more affordable $890 version, which includes an in-house movement. So comparing that to the Maurice Lacroix Acon hashtag Tide that we just saw there, um, it may not quite have the same level of morality to it, but in terms of design, it manages to bring a unique styling to the integrated feel with that inset bezel that they have going on there. I understand this is a, a pretty high quality watch as well for the money. In-house movement too, might be tricky to get serviced, but still it gives you that extra cachet. Yeah, really nice. Um, I like all the little extra details as well as the integrated case. You've got some nice curved recessed notches on the bezel. And another th uh, another theory I think is what makes something look a bit more 70s. I don't think this necessarily looks that 70s case wise, but if the dial looks like molded rubber flooring of a supermarket that you might see in the 70s, I think that is a bit of a tell. Yeah, it does look like the inside of my leg when I've worn socks that are too tight. Cool watch though. Um, another one, here we've got a Mido Multifort TV Big Date uh, for £1,000 and 10, <laughs> for £1,010. So it's a 40 millimeter case, and uh, yeah, TV shaped, <laughs> sort of relatively cushion shaped case. It's kind of weird because I suppose it's integrated, but you clearly have got some lugs there. So I suppose I'm not sure. It's skirting the rules, but I'll allow it. It has uh, one lonely bezel screw, which makes it, it puts it into that <laughs> Gerald Gentle wheelhouse. Could be a could be a bezel pip. <laughs> it does look like a bezel pip, doesn't it? On a non-rotating bezel, as, as yeah. far as I understand. Perhaps it's loom coated so you can identify which way is up when you're looking at your watch. Um, but cool, like nice textured dial there. Some horizontal brushing on the on the dial there. Um, a bit smoky. Yeah, it looks like an old TV. That's very 70s, isn't it? Being part of the Swatch group, of course, it contains a variant of the Powermatic 80. So it gets the 80 hours of power reserve. And here with a big date complication too, which is unusual at this price point of £1,000 and 10. Um, I can only imagine the loom dot is a bit of a, a dig at the functionless bezel screws being a functionless loom pip. Or it could be a helpful reminder of which way to put your watch on when putting it on in the pitch black, as we all do. Moving on to a watch that I have mentioned a lot lately, um, concerningly so. This is uh, the upper echelons of the price point for the affordable range, but nevertheless gives you a huge quality to value ratio this is the christopher ward the 12 um starts off at a uh, low low 850 price moves up to 1500 in full titanium with the bracelet comes in 36 millimeters or 40 millimeters brings in a lot of different details from the integrated space and more importantly a lot of details from watches that cost a lot more than it does as we will go on to see. From the Swish logo raised motif on the dial to the 12 sided bezel, hence the 12, all the different facets, all the different layers. Yeah, it, the reason why I purchased one is because I looked at it and I was like, yeah, this is really cool and I'm a cheapskate. 
cheapskate and this watch doesn't that doesn't correlate this looks like high-end luxury it's strong lines isn't it it's bold edges like facets like you said and there's just so many different angles and lines and shapes and contours it just really really pops it gives it great depth and um it's just an amazing proposition for the money uh yeah great watch so moving on to enough money to potentially make it affordable into that kind of money where you think, mm, I need to think about this and ruminate. This is the rumination range, aka mid-range. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps um, where for that sort of money, you want a little bit more brand recognition, um, which leads us on to Frederick Constant and the High Life Watch. <laughs> um, uh, there's the the automatic Cosk times Philip Au, which has a lovely uh, sort of crystallized texture to the the dial there and uh, someone throwing the peace sign at two o'clock which is pretty cool at 41 millimeters in diameter and 1700 pounds it's pretty cool something a bit different yeah yeah and for those of you who don't know frederick constant is actually owned by citizen now and i, I think it's a, a really really nice design as well perhaps not stand out and eye-catching a little bit pricier at 1700 uh, odd pounds but there you go. Um, to bring back a name that we have just spoken about, we're talking about the Maurice Lacroix Acon, but minus the hashtag Tide. This is the the normal non-plastic version of that. Comes in a range of different sizes uh, from 39 millimeters and starting at around 2,550 pounds. Yeah, so I mean, those ones are around two and a half thousand euros, but they quickly jump up if you get the chronograph skeleton, which looks impressive with the skeletonized dial and chronograph movement. That's 7,900 euros. Um, and then you've got the Icon Master Grand Date Technicolor, the exposed balance wheel there for 9,400 euros. Pretty weird. Moving on to Baume et Mercier. This is the Riviera, starting at 39 millimeters and 3,600 pounds. This does hark back to a historic watch made by Baume et Mercier and comes in a variety of different complications, um, all the way up to the 16,990 pound perpetual calendar. It's got all that good stuff. It's got a uh, faceted bezel, it's got screws in that bezel, it's got the integrated bracelet, in some cases even a smoky see-through dial. Nice. Yeah, those value-adding bolt screws are really good, and a octagonal porthole-style bezel. Ooh, desirable. <laughs> Next we've got a integrated offering from Tudor. This is the Royal. Uh, so there's some nice 70s golden uh, brown colourings there, but you can just get good old blue. Uh, so again, yeah, the case is a yeah, bit of a slab, but again, there's that nice Boolean operation where someone's pressed a large sphere up against the top and bottom, giving it a nice curve angled edge there. Um, the bezel is um, notched um, and reminiscent of, I would say, the edge of a new pound coin, which is very luxuriant. They size this thing from 28, 34, 38 and 41 millimeters, starts at just 1970 pounds. Again, Tudor just can't seem to make the integrated watch work for them because this is a really fantastic offering to that collection and I don't see them that often. I don't see people talking about them that often. So if you like it, then get in there fast before other people notice in 10 years time. Jumping over to Breitling, this is the recently revived Chronomat, uh, starting at 40 millimeters and 4,950 pounds. The Chronomat has been pushed and pulled around a little bit, started off life, basically looking like the Navitimer, evolved into something else and now it is this. Has a very very cool bandolier style integrated bracelet, can be had in time only or chronograph and with the with the uptick in quality that we've seen again from Breitling actually in person is a really really, it's got lots of contrast, pops. Really nice, again really nice lines. Um, I think what's interesting about this is it is integrated, but there is the suggestion of lugs. They've sort of kept those lines there. Uh, yeah, some prehensile lug action. Next, we've got another one from Citizen, but this is their higher-end Grand Seiko rival offering. Uh, this is the Citizen. This is a real doozy. It's very blocky, but it just looks like... The angles of the integrated case are so meticulously finished. It just looks so precise. You've got a little, a really lovely corner 
Um, it's so sharp it could take your eye out. Um, beautifully textured dial, um, sub dial, seconds hand, and sword hands and applied batons. It just looks really sharp and really tight. I love this watch, so cool. I especially love the logo, which looks like it should be displayed outside a, a big building made of stone on long flags. Also great about this watch, Citizen. I mentioned they own Frédéric Constant. They also own Swiss movement manufacturer La Jupere, and they roped them in to make the Calibre 0210 for this particular watch. It's a very high-end Calibre, very, very well finished. Um, La Jupere also make movements for Arnold & Son, which is a properly high-end manufacturer, also owned by Citizen. And so everything together here, I think at launch a few years ago, this was around £6,000. I find it really difficult to actually locate these for sale. So I don't know if they're very, very difficult to get or limited, but if you can get one, I think you're getting a lot of bang for the buck. Yeah, I think uh, they might be boutique only in, in specific regions. So uh, not, not a global release. So if, yeah, if you can get one, um, maybe buy it and I'll give you the money later. Send it to me. Um, yeah. Boutique only. More like boo-teak only. Yeah. Or booty tickle only in exchange for this watch, please. Um, moving to a manufacturer who has been around the block a little bit. This is Zenith with the Defy and the most recent edition, Skyline. It's a 41mm watch, £7,900. Within it, you get the El Primero calibre, but all of the chronographness has been stripped out and you've just been left with a tenth of a second sub-second dial, which ticks around once every 10 seconds to remind you of the history of your watch. You can start to see some of the influences we saw in the earlier 12 in this watch, uh, obviously for a lot more money. But the, the quality, the, the heritage, it's all there in a Zenith. Yeah, again, it's those really strong lines, those facets, those angles, that high mirror finishing on the edges and things. Um, and again, we've got the return of the uh, the moulded rubber flooring of you know the stock room of a Woolworths in the 70s. Uh, so that's really nice on the dial. Let's move away from the mid-range and start spending some proper cash, okay? Because this is the premium collection of integrated watches. Why don't you start us off? Uh, yeah, well, I think I've made a boo-boo here because the beauty of integrated, as I understand it with dishwashers and other white goods, is that, you, you know, it's sort of seamless. It doesn't disrupt the flow. You don't get big gaps down the side of your worktops and your washing machine for, you know, crumbs and things to fall down. You're really grabbing that premiumness and running with it, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that premium feel of an integrated kitchen. Um, but Piaget have still got lugs that, you know, you can still get crumbs down. But I guess it's it's still kind of integrated. It's a bit of a, a sort of straddling lugs and integratedness. Um, yeah, it's a normal watch with a fake moustache masquerading as an integrated watch. Yeah. Um, so varying sizes from about 36 mil to 42 millimeters, 1100 pounds uh, thereabouts, uh, whether you get rubber strap or bracelet. 1100 pounds? I think you mean 11,000 pounds. Oh my God. About 11,000 um, pounds, depending on whether you get rubber strap or bracelet, but really cool cushion shaped case. Um, yeah, it looks really sleek, like it's almost been a bit squished, uh, but in a fun way. We all want to be a bit squished in a fun way, Tom. Piaget has uh, been known for its incredible ultra-thin watches, and it's taken some of that watchmaking learning into this. Um, it, it's definitely at the higher price point, but very much at the lower price point for our premium integrated watches, such as the Glashütte Original 70s Chronograph Panorama Date, a 40mm watch that boasts more of that 70s TV goodness. Yeah. It includes some very unique features for a chronograph, including a numerical 12-hour display. It has the big date too, and also sneaks in a power reserve on the left-hand sub-dial. The movement is typical Glashütte Original fare, which is to say quite incredible. Has a lot of that Germanic finish to it, lots of striping, big rotor weight with a slab of gold to make sure it swings round and round, and you can see the cotton wheel poking out from the back. That is £12,700. Wow, yeah. Very retro looking, 70s TV shape of it, and I like that that sort of weird counter display at the, uh, in the middle there. Um, it just looks like it's crying out for an aerial, doesn't it, sticking out the side. 
<laughs> yeah, a bent one. From that to another 70s, uh, very 70s looking, we're back on the Ingenieur, the recently released 2023 Ingenieur Automatic 40. Uh, yeah, again, all your favourite 70s integrated stylings. Um, you've got your integrated case, but now with some very um, soft edges, more kind of curviness, um, which is very pleasing. You've got good old uh, value adding bezel bolts and molded rubber flooring from the 70s on the dial again. Hooray. Um, but all come together to look astounding, a fantastic looking watch. 12,000 Swiss francs for all of that. Uh, so we're really starting to push it now, but you guess what you pay for and that's super styling 70s IWC. This is one of the very few originally designed by Gerald Genta and you're going to pay for it. It's a very well made watch and if you don't want to pay for it then I'll remind you of what we discussed at the beginning which is the IWC Ingenieur Mission Earth which is available for around four to five thousand pounds. A little bit bigger but a heck of a lot cheaper. What isn't a heck of a lot cheaper is the £12,200 Gerard Perigo Laureato. We're starting to move into some really heavy hitter watchmakers here. Gerard Perigo have been around for a long, long time, since 1791. You get all of the things that you expect of an integrated watch. You get the faceted bezel, you get the integrated case and bracelet, you get the waffly waffle dial in the bluest of blues at 42mm and just 10.68mm high. If you want to find one of these watches that comes from a high-end manufacturer that you are more likely to be able to get hold of, this is probably one of them. Yeah, really cool, really interesting design. I like the octagonal bezel on the radial bezel underneath. It gives it a nice sort of step. Um, loads of cubes on the dial. It looks really cool, catches the light in a really nice way. Yeah, this is a really cool watch. So moving on again then to the show part. Yeah, very blocky again. Um, a grey block bezel screws hurrah lovely textured dial um couple of variations there's the uh, 41 millimeter lucent steel alpine eagle for 12,900 pounds um and that's a very nice clean looking watch um and then you can get the alpine eagle 41 xps uh, which is a cool abbreviation for something cool i imagine um and that one's a lot more that's twenty thousand five hundred pounds um and there the uh central second hands has been miniaturized onto its own subdial at six which uh just makes it infinitely more classy so that's what you're paying for i would imagine both of these watches are incredibly well made uh, so chopard has its luc collection which is its very high-end one, made to the same level of quality as Patek Philippe et al. And these watches are made by that team to that level of quality. And the XPS being so much more expensive is because it has the micro rotor movement, which is incredibly highly revered. Um, speaking of Gerald Genta, here's another watch that was designed by him um, closer towards his passing. This is the Octo Finissimo, and that collection was inherited by Bulgari who have uh, continued it into a range of ultra thin watches and some of the thinnest watches in the world. A uh, very, very fitting tribute. The entry to that collection is the Octo Finissimo at £15,100 and it looks more like a solid block of metal than you could ever possibly hope for with a blasted titanium case and bracelet and even dial with black hands and markers the whole thing looks incredibly industrial but being extra thin at just 5.15 millimeters the blockiness just seamlessly blends into your wrist in some sort of human machine cyborg relation there's nothing else quite like it is there it looks so singular in its appearance i love the corners the lugs the, the steps it looks very architectural like i don't know it's like an mc escher yeah painting or something um yeah really cool watch next we're going for something um a bit different uh the approach from h moser uh their approach is very simple but very elegant you've got this nice sort of medallion cushion shaped case here straight into a very serpentine-esque bracelet and then you've got a smoky salmon dial and uh, just very limited piece produced for only one year yeah very very nice 40 millimeters 19,900 swiss francs it looks quite big but it is one of the most comfortable and um unobtrusive watches to wear that i've experienced um 
We're coming on to the home stretch now. Uh, this is, of course, the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, uh, the one that started it all off. You can choose to buy it in 41 millimeters at 23,900 pounds or 39 millimeters at 67,300 pounds. And you might be wondering why. That's because the original watch known as the Jumbo was continued for a long time with the JLC ultra thin movement in it. And an Audemars Piguet in-house movement alternative was offered alongside it. The AP in-house movement still continues, has grown in size from 39 millimeters to 41 millimeters. The jumbo version also continues, but now has a different Audemars PK movement in, but is still smaller and thinner, but is also confusingly, Tom, still called the jumbo. Well, you know, it's the name recognition, isn't it? Jumbo, is, there's quite a lot of cachet to that, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. But it's, it's funny, isn't it? We come to this watch and we've seen so many of these design cues um, these visual eye dents on these watches, octagonal bezels, hard lines, screws in the in the bezel, the waffle dial, but they're all just aping this product. This is the original Genta, the OG, um, <laughs> and it, it's just impossible to beat, isn't it? It's the real McCoy. Another hot ticket item from Vacheron Constantin. This is one of their flagship models. The Overseas, uh, a very attractive watch. You've got this spinning blade bezel that just looks spectacularly cool. Again, hard lines. You've got Maltese cross-shaped logo features on the links, um, which is impeccably implemented there. Very, very clever. Um, and it all just comes together in this 41 millimeter steel watch for £24,000. But it just looks so iconic in its own right. Um, it's taking integratedness, but... But again, like the Moser, doing something a bit different, bit clever. Um, very, very attractive design. It's the only one of the big three that wasn't designed by Gerald Genta. Um, it was more of a begrudging, like, oh, fine. Vacheron Constantin a few years later. Um, talking of the big three, though, we're moving on to, of course, the Patek Philippe Nautilus 5811. Um, this watch in 5711 form was in stainless steel and quite a lot cheaper than this watch is £56,190. Thank you very much, sir. It's now in white gold. Um, Patek Philippe didn't want to become known as the Nautilus company, so they are making less of them and they're making them more expensive in white gold. Uh, but nevertheless, it's got those gentle looks and people like it. Yeah, a bit closer to the Ingenieur than the Royal Oak. It's a bit softer, um, not as many hard lines, but it's got those ears, uh, which give it a very distinctive shape. Yeah, again, another another hard one to beat, isn't it? This is this is the one. The, I mean, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, to so wrap our collection up, Tom, I think there's just there's just one more. There's just one more. Um, so this is the most expensive of the bunch, but arguably the prettiest, I think you could say. Uh, this is the Vacheron Constantin, the 222, a true icon of the 1970s, brought back in 2022. Uh, this is just liquid gold. This is a galaxy caramel of the watch world if it was made by Lindor. <laughs> uh, some clumsy confectionery analogies for you there. But what I'm trying to say is this is just a beautiful watch. So sleek, so elegant. Even though it's entirely yellow gold, it's just not gaudy at all. It's just so um, sophisticated and lovely. They've got a notched bezel, those diamond links, um, a tapered, sleek uh, form factor. It's just fantastic. It wears so nicely. And um, for £71,000, it, it sort of earns that price tag in a way. This, this is the original design that Vacheron did begrudgingly. They called it the 222 to celebrate the 222nd anniversary of Vacheron Constantin. They didn't bother giving it an actual name. That's how indifferent they were to it. And even though it wasn't a Gerald Genta watch, even though it wasn't a favourite of Vacheron at the time, it, to me, is the crowning integrated watch of the entire collection. That, unfortunately, does coincide with it being the most expensive and the least obtainable. But there you go. That's how the cards are dealt. Dear viewer and listener, what other integrated watches would you add into this collection from integrated mid-range to high-end? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like and subscribe. And if you are looking to buy a watch, integrated or otherwise, head on over to watchfinder.com. Goodbye.